Greetings everyone, and welcome to this video on node-based texture painting in Blender 2.8. My name is Michael McCann, and we're just going to be discussing a different kind of workflow than maybe you're used to for painting in Blender. And the first thing I'd like to discuss is layers and blend modes. So I'm here in version 2.8, and I've already assigned a material to my object, and I'm in the texture paint workspace. And if I come over to my tool options, uh, as you can see, there are currently no available paint slots, but I can add them by just clicking Add Paint Slot and then selecting any one of these options. And the texture will name itself according to its corresponding input on the material shader. Uh, so once you click OK, then it automatically adds that node to the principled shader. But something that Blender is missing in its texture painting tool settings is a layer system, similar to what's present in 2D software like GIMP and Photoshop. And this allows us to paint lighting and shadow and even other details without actually affecting the base texture underneath. And currently Blender does have blend types that can be assigned to brushes, but again, this affects the base color itself. And ideally you would want to do this on layers above the base color. But this is actually a pretty easy thing to set up in Blender. If I duplicate this texture node with Shift D, and I'll click the little plus tab to create a new texture, and I'll call it color underscore add. And it needs to be black because it will add any value lighter than black. Then we'll mix those two textures with a mix RGB node, set the blend type to add and take the factor all the way up. Now I can duplicate this texture again, click on the little plus tab, and we'll call this one color underscore multiply. And this one needs to be white because it'll add any value darker than white. Then add another mix RGB and set this one to multiply, and again, take the factor all the way up. Now I'll select the original texture, which was material base color. I'll give it a red color and I'll give it a value somewhere in the middle. And I'll use this plane as our canvas to paint on the color. So now I'll come to my next paint slot, which is color underscore add. And I won't make any changes here, uh, but as you can see, if I paint on it, you can see the difference. And that's because it's only adding the, the value from above that point. So anything from halfway above that value limit. If I come to the color multiply, and again, I won't make any changes, it will still add color, but it won't add any value unless it's below this point. And just like we saw in GIMP, the base color hasn't been affected. It's all layered on top, which is exactly what we want. Now let's add a new paint slot. This time we'll add bump mapping. And we want the color to be that mid-ranged gray tone uh, because it's sort of a good threshold value, uh, meaning anything lighter will have an effect or anything darker will have an effect. So if I, for instance, paint white on the surface, it will raise the bump. And if I use black, it'll have the opposite effect. Now let's talk about influencing multiple inputs at once. Say I wanted this color underscore add to also affect the bump mapping. Well, I could just duplicate this mix RGB node. Now I'll take this color output and plug it into the second input on that mix RGB. And I can do the same thing for the color underscore multiply. Just duplicate this mix RGB, bring it down, and plug in the output of the color into the second input on this node as well. Now with the color underscore add paint slot selected, I can select the color and then paint that color along with the bump at the same time, which is actually a lot of fun. It's a little like, uh, it feels a little like sculpting and painting at the same time. And you can paint any color that you want, but it's important to remember that the value is important because that will determine the strength of the bump. Lighter colors will have a stronger effect and darker colors will be a little more subtle. The color multiply paint slot is really handy in this way because it's sort of like painting the bump and ambient occlusion at once. We can of course add other paint slots as well, such as metallic. And for metallic, I would keep it as a black texture because black means not metallic at all. And we could paint values of white or gray to, to indicate which parts of the model are metal. Uh, but something like roughness, I would keep at like a mid-range gray and that way we can paint lighter or darker values so that we can determine which parts of the model need to be more reflective and which parts would be more rough. And as far as the influencing multiple inputs goes, 
It doesn't have to stop at bump mapping. We can, for instance, here with the metallic texture, add in a mix RGB node, switch it to add, and then take the color output and plug it in. And now if we paint with that paint slot, we're painting color, bump, and metallic at once. It's a little like Substance Painter, albeit not nearly as good. But this workflow works really well, especially for game artists who bake out their individual textures for game environments. Aside from the principled shader, we can add new shaders and then create new paint slots to be a factor between the two. In this instance, I want to add a transparent shader and then mix the two with a mix shader. Then I'll add a new texture and call it transparent and I'll keep it as white because white means no transparency at all. And that will be the mix factor. And if you're painting an Eevee, you need to come down to your material settings where it says blend mode and choose either alpha blend or alpha clip and then you can paint your transparency right on the model. So let's do one more. We'll add an emission shader and mix the two with a mix shader. And we'll make sure that these textures are set to uh, non-color data since they're masks. I'll call this one emission and make it the mix factor. Then I'll enable the bloom in the render settings, and that way I can see that glowing emission effect as I'm painting in real time, which is super cool. So that's it for this video. I hope that you guys find this workflow useful in your own projects, and I'll probably do more videos like this in the future. I really enjoy texture painting, so yes, definitely expect more. Uh, but that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also follow me on social media. Take care guys, thanks for watching.